Welcome back to CUTV News Center. I'm Creighton Rabs with your sports report. Let's open with some football. Slippery Rock all but punched their ticket to next week's PSAC State game with a convincing 35-17 win over California last Saturday. Slippery Rock quarterback Nigel Barksdale made a case for the Harlan Hill Trophy as the best player in D2. As Vul the Vulcans defense held strong through the first quarter before the Rock's quick strike attack took over later in the first half. To the highlights we go. Right there, Hollock Thompson now, Stadium in Slippery like Rock, seen for this now, Cody. this past and week's game. This is much like last year's. We're watching Nadir Brown here is going to throw a 53-yard pass off it's the reverse to Nadir Mike Brown Williams that'll set up a 44-yard Cody Nuzo field goal, and make it three nothing California. Out of the second quarter, Nigel Barksdale looking, scrambling a little bit, finds the open lane, takes it to the house, 7-3 Rock. Still in the second quarter, Mike Bonchavingo with a three-yard touchdown pass to John Shadman, that makes it 14-3 Slippery Rock. What's the end of the, of the second quarter? Brett Crenshaw punches it in from two yards out. They make it 21-3 Slippery Rock. And yeah, I'd say he's a little fired up. On the third quarter action, Cody Schroeder stepping in for an injured James Harris. Takes it in from 14 yards out. That makes it 21-10 Slippery Rock. Moving on to the fourth quarter, Barksdale again. This time to Robert Choice, 14 yards out. That'll make it 35-10 Rock. California trying to get back into the game, but Schroeder gets picked off by Derek Morgan, and that would seal the Vulcans' fate as Slippery Rock wins 35-17. to They clinch a share of the PSAC West, and in earning offense, Offensive Athlete of the Week honors, Nigel Barksdale threw for 274 yards and a pair of touchdowns, while he also rushed for 125 yards and a touchdown. By contrast, the California offense only managed 116 yards rushing as a team. And that'll set up this Saturday's home finale against Mercyhurst. Vulcans are looking to close out d divisional play on a high note during Senior Day inside Adamson Stadium. Kickoff will be at 3.30. CUT will have tape delay coverage of this contest, plus live online audio at wcal.calu.edu. Now, going on to volleyball, California rebounded from last Saturday's five-set loss at Clarion with a four-set win over C Seton Hill inside Hamer Hall. Vulcans looking to keep pace atop the PSAC West and hold off the visiting Griffins, currently third in the division. To the highlights we go. Head coach uh, Peter Letourneau I mean, getting his troops fired up. A rare game inside Hamer Hall. We we'll watch the closing of the first set. Here's Laurel Miller with a kill. California wins the first set 25-19. We go on to the second set. We'll see Renee Helmer, the sophomore from, uh, from Canada, with not one, not two, but three service aces in a row. California would start to pull away in the second set. Helmer fired up, but the Griffins would respond. Here's Lauren Teed with a pair of back-to-back -back aces of her own. Ultimately, the Griffins would tie the set at 17-17 before you see the service error there. That would tie the, mat, the set. And another service error. That, that, gives, that gave Seton Hill the win in the second set. Here's Molly Delaney with the match-winning kill in the fourth and final set. California three sets to one over Seton Hill. Miller and Delaney each recorded double doubles in kills and digs. California will host Slippery Rock and Edinburgh this weekend. And with the first Atlantic regional rankings coming out, California placed second behind Wheeling Jesuit. You see Clarion is third, the PSAC well represented in this poll as they are every year. Top eight teams will qualify for the NCAA tournament starting next month. A new season for the Cal U men's and women's basketball teams opened this weekend as both teams are looking to build upon the progress from, their, from last season. CUTV's Matthew Hagee has a preview of both teams. It is once again time for basketball season in California as the Vulcan men and women's teams are set to tip off their seasons. Uh, you know, I think the way we finished last year, everybody's anticipating this year and the the seven returners we have are, are ready to go. They've been waiting all summer long and are ready to get back out on the court. I'm looking forward to new challenges with our new players. Uh, I think uh, they're, they're going to be some great uh, competition throughout the league, and, and uh, we can't wait to get started.
For the women's team, they look to build off an improbable run last season that saw the Vulcans upset both Edinburgh and Glenville State en route to an appearance in the Sweet 16, while the men's team looks to improve from last season with an exciting group of young players featuring junior Tynell Fortune. Tynell Fortune uh, is a, a, a great offensive player. We're just trying to get him to, to, uh, to round out the rest of his game. He, he adds a lot of quickness to our team. A player that could have a breakout season for the Vulcan women is junior guard Emma Mahati. I think this year you're going to see a lot more consistency from her. She's been working really hard, you know, in this preseason, and w her confidence is there, and I think you're going to see a, a brand new Emma. The men begin in a tournament in West Virginia this weekend facing Shepard and Charleston, while the women will start with a tough four-game stretch to open the season starting Saturday night with Millersville. You know, right off the bat, we come out and, and play some tough teams, but we learned last year that you have to play tough teams regionally to make the NCAA tournament. So I know it's early and I hope we're ready for them, but you got to play those games if you want to be in it at the end. Uh, we're looking forward to a great year and possibly going further in postseason play. The Vulcan women were picked third in the preseason PSAC West poll, while the men were picked fourth. Both teams look to finish higher than expected this season. For CUTV News Center, I'm Matthew Hagee. All right, Matt, thank you. On to the Vulcan scoreboard. Women's soccer beating Mercyhurst 5-0 on Tuesday as five different Vulcans scored a goal in the PSAC quarterfinal match. It will earn California hosting rights for the conference semifinals and finals for the third consecutive year. California will face Shippensburg in one semifinal Friday morning at 11 a.m. The Vulcans defeated the Red Raiders 2-1. Just last week, the winner of that match will face Gannon or Westchester on Saturday. California, the only higher seed to advance to the semifinals, as you see on the, on the bracket, fifth seed Shippensburg advanced to the semis after a penalty kick shootout win at Edinburgh. Seventh seeded Gannon knocked off number two Slippery Rock, and sixth seeded Gannon at well, Westchester knocked off Kutztown. As you can see, the PSAC tournament is also big with respect to regional rankings. California earning the top spot, followed by Slippery Rock and Shippensburg, Westchester 5th and Gannon 8th. The entire top 10 consisting of PSAC schools. The top six seeds will qualify for the NCAA tournament beginning next week. Men's and women's cross country will travel to Lock Haven for the Atlantic Regionals. The Vulcan men finished fourth in the PSAC meet two weeks ago in Kutztown. It is their best showing in nearly a quarter century, while the women placed eighth during the PSAC meet. And finally, women's swimming will be in Lake Erie for a quad meet this weekend. For the latest scores, schedules, and more, visit calvulcans.com. And I will say it's a, it certainly speaks, speaks volumes to how, how good our women's soccer program is that we're hosting the PSAC semifinals and finals uh, for the thir third year in a row. I think that's amazing. I support the team uh, so much. I haven't been able to go to any games because I um, normally work or have class or something. Something always comes up and I haven't seen them this year. But I'm, I think it's amazing and I think they're doing a great job and I hope they make it all the way. It definitely shows a good impression of Cal. I was actually soccer manager in high school, so I really like the sport. My brother played all through, so I grew up with the sport, and I really like the sport a lot. I think it's going to be a fun weekend to say the least, because because you know what? I mean, my memories of my first time I saw this team was back back east in Westchester in the 2010 tournament, and there were some they had some epic battles with Westchester, and we hope certainly hope the Vulcans can come out on top this weekend. Thanks, Creighton. You're welcome. And finally, one of the big early surprises for the Kentucky Wildcats basketball team is the shooting prowess of freshman James Young. However, when Young was racing to save a loose ball, headed for the first row of seats during Monday's game, Young flung the ball behind his back and up in the air as he fell out of bounds. And here's what happened. Working on Poitras, who has him on a switch. Another block for Cauley Stein, saved in by Young, but he threw it into the basket! when he saved it off the sideline. In case you're wondering, that's an obscure rule. That improbable shot was only worth two points for the opposing team. I think that's absolutely incredible. I didn't, I didn't even know that that was, like that's even possible. I, I don't know. You'd be that's surprised amazing. what things could happen on a court, I'm sure. I mean, I've seen <laughs> some trick shots, but that one was, it was impressive. I agree, it definitely was. <laughs> That will do it for this week's edition of News Center. Be sure to check out our live video feed on our website, cutv.calu.edu backslash live. Thanks for watching and have a great week.